Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Good Shepherd. Good Shepherd is a church community that practices welcome and forgiveness and service to others. We welcome all to our church without exception. You are a child of God, and your story and your life are valuable here in our congregation and in the world. We're so glad that you're here. A special note today, we have a guest organist with us, and so we just want to give a big thanks to Don uh, Horisberger for being here today. Thank you so much, Don. And we continue on in this season of Easter as we hear stories, more stories of Christ's resurrection uh, presence and what that means in our world. So we look forward to that today. I invite you to please stand. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark car carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Together, let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. One through seven. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. For everyone who commits sins is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, 
They were disbelieving and still wondering. Jesus said to them, have you anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. And then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I still was with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. And at this time, I'd like to invite up any children who are here for the children's message. Come on up. Good morning, good morning. Come on up. You can have a seat. Good morning. I have things to show you today, Eli. Yes. Come on up. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Are you awake? Oh, good, okay, phew. Did anybody enjoy the nice weather yesterday? Yeah, and today? I can't wait to play outside later. So fun. You forgot to get ice cream. Oh, you did, you got ice cream, I see. Yeah, you don't wanna to forget to do that. That would be a problem. I brought some things to show you today because uh, I've been thinking about how sometimes a certain object or an image can remind us of a story. And these are all different, different things that hopefully remind us of stories in the Bible. Sound good? So, so it's kind of like a game. You're going to help me guess what story these objects go with. Are you ready? I have, first I have a pair of... Zebras. Does that remind you of any story with two animals? I heard it. Noah's Ark. That's right. Noah's Ark. So like animals remind us of Noah's Ark. All right. Now this one is a thinker. Are you ready? Pretend, for example, that this is the most beautiful coat in all these different colors that you've ever seen in your life. Who? Yeah, who was, what, what was that guy's name? Does anybody remember? Joseph, we got there. Joseph, very good. All right, how about this one? A, a little lamb, does that remind you of a story in the Bible? Joy, what, what story? The shepherds, yeah, from, maybe from like the nativity story. There's all, actually, this is kind of a trick question because there's a bunch of stories about sheep and shepherds in the Bible. I'm, that's amazing. I'm so, I'm so glad you like robots. Can, we're gonna talk about sheep though. Um, all right, this is a little bit trickier one. Are you ready? Oh, what do you think? What do you think? Eli, what do you think? When Jesus fed a thousand people, like a whole bunch of people with fish, So good, so true, yeah. When Jesus went out with the disciples in the boat, Luke, you said that, said that so well, and they caught all kinds of fish. They were first catching nothing, and then Jesus said, put the net on the other side, and they did, and then all kinds of fish came. Yeah. Do you have an idea, Weston? What, what else? Yeah. You've been fishing? I love that for you. That's amazing. Did you catch a fish? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have a lot to say today. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. There's like more, more stories, right? Did you know that there's a fish in our story today? What? Isn't that? Did you catch it? The story that I read today, Jesus came back 
he's alive again, right? Because of Easter. And do you know what he asks for to eat? He says, he, he says, hey, I'm really hungry. Do you have anything to eat? And the disciples give him some broiled fish. Is that what you would ask for? No, probably not. But maybe, maybe you really like fish. Well, something really cool. Oh my gosh, yes. You are, Weston, it sounds like you have so much experience with fishing and with family fishing. I love that so much. You're, it sounds like your grandpa fishes. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, it ate the fish. Yeah, so Jesus was eating a fish today. But that reminded me of the fact that Jesus and the symbol of the fish is actually really special. There's a bunch of stories in the Bible about Jesus and fish, but also, has anybody ever seen this symbol right here with the fish symbol? Yeah. So just like when we see this symbol, a cross, right? We're supposed to think of Jesus. Just like that, when we see this fish symbol, we're invited to think about Jesus. Yeah, I'm gonna, great question, Eli. So this, these are some Greek letters and, and in Greek, uh, a fish is called ichthys. And I know, isn't that funny? And so it's an abbreviation also for Jesus. And so people were like, fish, Jesus, makes sense. There's a connection there. So whenever you see a fish, you can think of Jesus too. Isn't that kind of funny? Is that true? It may be so. You think when you see this fish, you'll think of Jesus? Yeah. Maybe you will now. I think that's so cool. Fish and Jesus go together. Did you know that that's, this is what this children's message was going to be about and you brought your, your stuffed fish up here? Oh my gosh, Samuel, you're, you're just on top of it. I love it. Let's say a prayer, okay? Next time you see the symbol of the fish, you can think, I know what that is. That's about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, Thank you for Jesus. Help us to remember him wherever we go. And thank you, God, for fish. (laughs) And all God's children said, thank you so much for coming up. You can go back to church school or back to your seats. Oh. I meant to the back of the sanctuary to go to church school. Yeah. Well, I hope you all have as much energy as they do today. My goodness. I don't know how many people know this. But in addition to the food donations that our food pantry receives, we also have to purchase certain items every week to help serve our clients. Sometimes we just don't have what they need, and so um, it's someone's job to go out and to buy all that stuff, to stock up on all those things that people need, but we have trouble keeping in stock. For example, cleaning supplies or laundry detergent. And do you know whose job it is? Rick Thomas, our outreach director. He goes shopping every week to help supply what we need. I happen to share my office with Rick Thomas. (laughs) And while he is a really fun guy to be around, I went shopping with him one time, never again. (laughs) When you go shopping with Rick, he is like a force to be reckoned with. He's got his cart. He is on a mission. He knows exactly where everything is in every store. And he does not slow down for anyone. He knows what he's getting, and he fills up his cart with dozens of laundry detergent bottles and cleaning supplies until it is just stacked to overflowing. As you can imagine, when he pushes that cart up to the checkout lane, people take notice. They wonder, what in the world is this guy doing with all that stuff? And Rick will tell you that he has the most interesting conversations in the dollar store. One of the perks of sharing an office with him is that I get to hear those stories and hear about the people he met that day 
and especially he loves to tell the stories of when he's wearing his good shepherd gear or his holy cow shirt, and people ask him about it. And he gets to tell the story of our church and what he's doing and why. Rick is one of our best witnesses, I think, in this church on those dollar store trips. He gets to tell the story of this faith that we share. Now, I know not all of us have the chance to share our church connection or our faith quite so openly every week when we're out living our lives. And yet it's that kind of openness, that kind of telling others about our faith, that's exactly what Jesus calls us to do. After Jesus' death and resurrection, he showed his followers signs of his new life in order to encourage them to tell others so they might believe too, to spread this beautiful faith that we have. Last week, we got to hear from our church member, former Presbyterian pastor Greg Meyer, about doubting Thomas and the normalcy of doubt and asking questions about what we believe. And this week, we get to hear more of the disciples' experience as they witness Jesus' resurrection for themselves. They still aren't quite sure what they're seeing. Even though Jesus shares the peace with them, They still aren't sure. So then he shows them his scars so that they might know he's not an illusion or a ghost, but that he's really there and alive. That's the story they're supposed to tell, that God is all about new life for us. The full bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ The fact that it's not a spirit of Jesus showing up, but his whole self, it's one of those points in our faith that can make us kind of uncomfortable because it's hard to prove and explain. It's not logical. There's no scientific evidence for it. And yet that's what we know, that Jesus was resurrected, body and spirit, fully, just as he was. God has the power to bring back God's own son fully into, back into this world for the sake of the world. And as we ponder the mystery of that, we might also take a moment to think about the fact that when our, our, uh, when our powerful God brings Jesus back to life, when Jesus is resurrected, did you notice he still has all his wounds? That's how he shows people who he really is. Signs of his struggling and suffering still exist on him. Last week, my seven-year-old and I watched the Beauty and the Beast movie, the cartoon version. The part I didn't remember exactly was the ending, actually. When the beast gets turned back into a prince, you know this story, right? There's this magical moment where the beast is going to be transformed, and it's this whole scene of uplifting music and light and hope. And although when he becomes human again, his clothes are ripped, he looks a little bit disheveled. But what I noticed is that all his wounds are gone. He's fully restored. And there's this moment of like power and strength as he moves forward to embark on a new way of life. And that's so nice. But I was struck by the fact that our resurrected Jesus doesn't come back like that. He still has the nail marks in his hands and feet. He still has those scars. God shows us a different kind of power in Jesus' resurrection, and that power gives us something. It gives us permission for our wounds, for our pain, our scars, that our whole selves don't have to be hidden from God. And in fact, our scars might help us tell our story of faith to others. The Son of God dies, conquers death, defeats death in the ultimate battle. And when he wins again, he still bears those wounds. God doesn't take away his scars, but uses them to help us, children of God, know Jesus is real. God will not take away our scars either. Life includes us getting scars sometimes, experiencing pain in a wound or two. But our wounds never disconnect us from God. 
whatever we experience, wounds or not, we are still God's beloved ones and we share in that resurrected promise. To drive home this full humanness of Jesus, when he comes back, he's resurrected, he asks the disciples for something to eat. We've been having a debate in the office this week. If Jesus came back today, would he still ask for broiled fish? No. Of all the foods in the world. Anyway, Jesus eats, driving home the fact that he really is alive. In his eating, in his scars, he shows the disciples who he is. He creates communion with them. This week, that body and spirit connection of our faith stood out to me. On Thursday, we hosted an event here at Good Shepherd, facilitated by the Wisconsin Faith Voices for Justice, called Interfaith Intersections. I see a couple people who were there. This panel of folks, not clergy, but members of different faith traditions, shared their, um, their thoughts, their experiences on a topic. And the, this month's topic was fasting and self-denial. And we got to hear from a representative of the Baha'i faith, a fellow Lutheran Christian, and a woman from the Jewish faith. It was really interesting to hear about the different holidays and seasons that focus around fasting or self-denial, specifically fasting from food. But more than that, to me, what stuck out was the similarities. When we attempt to recenter our hearts on God, especially during the season we just went through Lent, we try to let go of the things that get in the way of us believing, and that is a type of fasting. The other two faith traditions practiced different times of fasting from eating, but the thing that stuck out to me was that not only were they fasting and having that bodily experience, but they always paired it with prayer. Prayer, spiritual growth, and hope was always connected to the body. Fasting by itself or giving up something doesn't do much, but when it's paired with prayer and focus on our faith, it can draw us closer to the divine. Jesus' bodily resurrection shows us this. In his eating, he reminds us that God draws us near and holds us close and creates communion with one another. And then at the end of this passage, Jesus sends his disciples out to tell others about this beautiful gift of grace for our bodies and our souls. God accepts us as we are, broken or scarred, tells us that we are loved and forgiven, feeds us a meal of forgiveness. In a couple minutes, you're going to come forward. We're not going to eat broiled fish today, but we are going to have the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And when we go out from this place, we're directed to tell others, to tell them about our church, yes, but more importantly, to tell them about Jesus. I read about the disciples this week, and I keep thinking about it, how we get afraid sometimes of talking about our faith with other people. Maybe we're nervous because we feel like we might get rejected or made fun of, or maybe we think people just won't care. But Jesus doesn't say, please go witness to our faith. He says, you are witnesses to the faith. Whether you're ready or not, whether you want to or not, Jesus calls us all witnesses, called out into this world to talk about God's love and the gift of forgiveness through Jesus Christ. In this passage, it says that the disciples were full of joy, but they also were still wondering and even disbelieving. And it's in that moment that Jesus asks them for something to eat. I love that the eating comes first and the witnessing comes second. Even if the disciples didn't totally know or believe that this was Jesus, they still offered him food. One theologian said it like this, when the disciples chose generosity over suspicion, their eyes were opened, death fled the room, and the resurrected Jesus came alive in them. Belief didn't come first, food did. 
well, I know something about this place in particular. We love to eat together. We love to feed others. So let's keep doing that. Let's keep eating together and feeding others and expecting the risen Christ to show up when we do. Because it's then that the risen Lord is present and at work in this world, scars and all, in us. Thanks be to God. Together, let's profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Overwhelmed with joy and gratitude that you have made yourself known to your people in the dying as well as the living Messiah, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those who need the good news. Risen One, like the disciples, we struggle to recognize you in the everyday journey of our lives. Help us to see you in the midst of questions and circumstances. Guide us with hope and point us to signs of your love and care for us. God of grace. Risen One, open our eyes to your work of transformation in the world around us. 
As we walk with you day by day, open our eyes to behold the beauty of nature, the beauty of other human beings, and the beauty of the universe. Help us to care for all you have created. God of grace. Risen one, help us to understand the power of our words to hurt or to heal. Grant graciousness to make the words of our elected leaders do the work of reconciliation and care instead of harm. We are bombarded with images and information every day that shape our attitudes and behaviors. Don't let us fall into apathy for the people and the places of the world that are hurting. Grant us continued compassion for those who live in fear of violence and war, especially we pray today for Israel, for Palestine, for Ukraine. God of grace. Risen one, as we looked at the world around us, help us to recognize one another as fellow children of God. May we continue to welcome the stranger, feed the hungry, give clothes to those who need them, and care for those who are grieving or sick. We pray especially today for the family of Al Ellingbow and for those who are on our hearts that we name aloud or silently right now. God of grace, hear our prayer. Risen one, you were made known to the disciples when you ate together with them. May your resurrection presence be with us today as we share the meal of Holy Communion. We ask for your blessing on those who are sharing our table for the first time, Denison and Luke. We also ask your blessing on Chloe, who will be baptized today. Help us all to trust in the promise of the forgiveness we find in this meal and through the gift of baptism and in the feast uh, eternal with all your saints to come. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your faithfulness and love through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that peace with those closest around us and wave that peace to those who are afar. Please be seated for this morning's offering.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Communion instructions will be on the screen before you as we begin to enter into this part of our worship service and share in this meal together. Above all, please know that this is the Lord's table and as such, everyone is welcome to join us in this meal. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood that's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by God's Holy Spirit, let's pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. Please be seated.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen us all and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Please turn your attention to the screen for some announcements in our life together. Hello, and thank you for joining us in worship at Good Shepherd. I'm Chris Schmuel, and I'm a member of the Good Shepherd Choir. Here's a look at what's coming in the days and weeks ahead. Are you looking for more information about baptism? If so, join us via Zoom on Thursday, April 18th at 6 p.m. Together, we'll explore baptism and how we practice the sacrament at Good Shepherd. For questions or to register, contact Emily Gold. This coming Saturday, April 20th, Good Shepherd welcomes nationally renowned professor and author Dr. Ryan Burge for a special presentation on the future of Christianity in America. This event will feature both a lecture and time for questions and answers. The event begins at 9 a.m. Refreshments are provided and no registration is required. And then on Saturday evening at Bree Stevens Field, Good Shepherd is gathering a group to attend the Madison Forward FC exhibition game against the UW-Madison men's soccer team. For tickets, visit gslcwi.com forward slash forward FC. On Wednesday, April 24th at 5.30 p.m., Good Shepherd is holding a volunteer appreciation dinner in Peterson Hall on the Madison campus to recognize and honor the contributions to our church from our many volunteers. So, if you have served by volunteering for the children and youth ministry, the food pantry, the clothes closet, the holy cow, in worship, or in any other capacity in this past year, then this dinner is for you. Please RSVP to Rhonda Beggs. Thank you for joining us in worship today. We'll see you around, church. Please stand. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope Bless you and I now and always. Amen.
Alleluia. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad.